Hello there. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Jane Street LRT. This is one of the unbuilt LRT lines from the Transit City proposal back in 2007. While the route wasn't built, that's not to say that there isn't some sort of future for the Jane Street corridor. So, let's get into the video. The origins of the Jane Street LRT, or any form of higher order transit on Jane Street, traces back to at least 2005, from what I have found. As part of the City of Toronto official plan, Jane Street was one of the corridors listed for some kind of transit priority in the long term. Jane Street is a major artery in the west end of Toronto, and the 35 Jane bus had an estimated ridership of around 30,700 riders per day in 2018. As well, there has always been a need for some kind of north-south transit line in the west end of the city, if not immediately, then definitely in the future. In this regard, Jane Street has a central location in the city's west end, being roughly 5 kilometers west of the Line 1 subway at their closest point, and 7 kilometers east of the western border of the city. Jane Street naturally presents itself as a possible contender for a future north-south transit corridor. Much like the other lines that would become part of the Transit City proposal, the main methodology behind this line was to improve local transit and increase accessibility to the subway in the city's west end in this case. In some regards, the Jane Street LRT can be viewed as the western counterpart to what would be the Don Mills LRT proposal. Now, while Jane Street was part of the city's official plan, there was no start date given for any kind of preliminary work on the road, and whatever project may have been proposed on Jane Street. That however would change two years later in 2007. In 2007, the City of Toronto under then-Mayor David Miller would unveil the Transit City Project, which proposed the construction of seven new LRT lines across the city. One of these being a 16.5 km line along Jane Street, running from Jane Station on Line 2 to the proposed Steeles West Station on Line 1, now called Pioneer Village Station. The Jane LRT, like all other lines at the start however, was not what we think of today when we look at the Eglinton Crosstown and the Finch West lines. Instead, the original plan for Transit City was to be in essence a massive expansion of the streetcar network using the same track gauge and rolling stock. In the case of the Jane Street LRT, this would have been facilitated through the extension of the 512 St. Clair from its current terminus at Keel Street west to Jane Street. The line would run on the surface in a dedicated right-of-way down the middle of the street with stops likely being similar to what is seen on St. Clair and Spadina. The Jane Street LRT, like its eastern counterpart on Don Mills, was also broken up into sections during planning, as Jane Street has space variations along its route. From Steeles to Wilson Avenue, Jane Street has a width of about 36 meters across. This is the ideal road size for an LRT project. Jane Street, however, does not maintain this road width beyond Wilson Avenue. The real problem for the Jane Street LRT would be south of Wilson Avenue as the road shrinks down further with no room for widening. This means there would be no space for a surface right-of-way between Wilson Avenue and Bluer Street. Running streetcars in mixed traffic along this stretch of road would defeat the purpose of the LRT and render half the line at the mercy of vehicular traffic. The only option it would seem would be a tunnel. The TTC would examine tunneling the line from Bluer Street to Wilson Avenue with an 8 km long tunnel. At the time of its original proposal, the Jane Street LRT was estimated to cost around $630 million to build, which if we are being honest is dubious at best. Regardless of those planning complexities, the streetcar idea would not last long as eventually the Jane Street LRT project along with its Transit City counterparts would be upgraded from simple streetcars to modern LRT with larger trains and a standard track gauge. By 2008, the TTC and planners involved would have a better idea of what the Jane Street LRT would be, although questions still remained. One of these questions being how would the line connect to the future Pioneer Village Station at Steeles? For this, three alignments were proposed, those being Option 1A, which looked at a connection via Steeles Avenue, 
Option 1B, which was rooting the line along Shoreham Drive, Murray Ross Parkway, and Steeles Avenue. And Option 1C, rooting the line along Shoreham Drive and Northwest Gate. For the sake of this video, I will continue to use option 1A, the Steels alignment, as that was the one most present in materials related to the project and can be seen as the preferred alignment. That said, the TTC would put forward proposals for both an underground alignment as well as a surface one, assuming it would even be possible in the first place. With this in mind, let's look at the route as it was planned for a surface alignment first. Starting from Pioneer Village Station, the route would have run west to Jane Street with stops at Murray Ross Parkway and Jane Street. The line would have then turned south and run along Jane Street to Bluer Street. The next set of stops would have been at Shoreham Drive, Driftwood Avenue, York Gate Boulevard, and Finch Avenue West where it would connect with the Finch West LRT as well as access to the maintenance center which I will call York Gate Yard for the purposes of this video. Continuing south, there would be stops at York Woods Gate, Grand Ravine Drive, Rita Drive, and Shepherd Avenue. A potential stop was also proposed for Yew Tree Boulevard, although there is no guarantee this stop would have been built. South of Shepherd Avenue, the next set of stops would be at Giltspur Drive, Exbury Road, Heathrow Drive, and Wilson Avenue. South of Wilson Avenue, the next set of stops would be at Falstaff Avenue, Maple Leaf Drive, Lawrence Avenue West, Trithui Drive, Weston Road, and Eglinton Avenue West. A stop may have also potentially been built at John Street. At Eglinton Avenue, the Jane Street LRT would connect with the Eglinton Crosstown LRT and have access to Mount Dennis Yard. Continuing south on the surface, the next stops would be at Outlook Avenue, St. Clair Avenue West, St. John's Road, Annette Street, Arda Street, and then Jane Subway Station. A stop may have also potentially been built at Woolner Avenue as well. At Jane Station, the line would connect with the Line 2 subway. As stated earlier, an underground alignment was also examined, and as you may expect, it would have far fewer stations. Everything north of Wilson Avenue would remain the same at surface level, however south of Wilson Avenue things would change. Following an underground alignment, the proposed stations would be at Maple Leaf Drive, Lawrence Avenue West, Weston Road, Eglinton Avenue, Outlook Avenue, St. Clair Avenue West, Annette Street, and Jane Subway Station. These were the two proposals put forward, although no final option would be chosen as the project would be dead two years later in 2010. In choosing the best method of transportation for the Jane Street Corridor, the TTC would examine the use of heavy metro, light metro, LRT, and BRT. It was estimated that by 2030, the Jane Street LRT would have a peak ridership of around 1,700 to 2,200 riders per hour, which is far below the minimum 10,000 riders per hour the TTC puts heavy and light metro at needing to justify their cost. Instead, the LRT and BRT technologies would be pushed forward for further review. In this review, the TTC would select LRT as its preferred technology as it noted the LRT would have the ability to run trains linked together, thus having enough space for the projected ridership while operating at 7 minute headways. LRT also offered a smoother ride and zero emissions. The downside of LRT would be its initial cost. By comparison, while BRT would be cheaper, it would be noted in the report that to effectively run the line at peak ridership would require 30 articulated buses per hour operating at 2 minute intervals, which was found to be unreasonable. It would be asking a bus route to operate at the same headways that the subway does during rush hour. The TTC would also examine what would be proper stop spacing on the route and would come to two possibilities. The first being a stop spacing of around 800 meters which would require an infrequent parallel bus service to be operated to fill the gaps. Under this scheme the route would have an average speed of around 26 to 27 kilometers per hour. The other idea being a stop spacing of 400 meters which would not require a parallel bus service. Under this scheme the route would have an average speed of around 22 to 23 kilometers per hour. The TTC would opt to go with a 400 meter stop spacing as they found that while the trains would stop less often under an 800 meter spacing scheme, this time would be offset 
by a longer time spent at the stations for the passengers transferring from the parallel bus service to the LRT. The increase in speed would only really benefit those who are actually within walking distance of a station. Everyone else would have to take a bus to the nearest LRT stop. It was also noted that the average speed of the line would only increase by no more than 5 km per hour and as low as 3 km per hour with an 800 meter stop spacing compared to the 400 meter stop spacing. Ultimately, 800 meter stop spacing would benefit few people, while 400 meter stop spacing would open the line to more riders and not make much of a difference in the grand scheme. As well, a parallel bus service would not be required. By 2008, the cost of the Jane Street LRT was around $800 million, including vehicles, which is once again a dubious number given the potential of having to potentially tunnel 8 kilometers of the line. Any discussion of the Jane Street LRT would become academic, as in 2010, then-Mayor of Toronto Rob Ford would unilaterally declare the Transit City project dead. Even after the bickering on City Council in the aftermath of this, when all was said and done and some projects were restored, the Jane Street LRT was not one of them. That's not to say it was dead completely, as in the following years the idea of higher order transit on Jane Street would come and go with each new grand transit plan. These include the Big Move plan by Metrolinx in 2012, the One City plan by TTC Chair Karen Stintz and City Councilor Glenn DeBearmaker in 2012, Mayor John Tory's transit plan in 2016, Metrolinx's regional transportation plan in 2016, the TTC's 2018 to 2022 corporate plan where it was described as Line 8, and the most recent 2041 regional transportation plan by Metrolinx. The Jane Street LRT plan wasn't without its flaws, the biggest being the route south of Wilson Avenue where Jane Street narrows. It is a question that was never answered, it still needs to be answered, as while there is no active planning being done on the route, it does still appear on official transit planning maps. There have been those who believe that perhaps Jane Street isn't the optimal route for higher order transit due to the issue south of Wilson Avenue. Islington Avenue and Kipling Avenue have both been touted as possible corridors for a north-south transit line in Toronto's West End. Transit advocate and historian Steve Monroe would also float the idea of the Jane Street LRT not needing to go south of Eglinton and may be better served as a shorter line from Eglinton Avenue to Steeles or as a branch line of the Eglinton Crosstown. Now with the proposed station at Jane Street on the Eglinton Crosstown being elevated, any potential of interlining a future Jane Street LRT with the Crosstown has been rendered moot for now. There is still an appetite for some kind of north-south line in Toronto's West End. However, now there exists the question of will it even run on Jane Street and what kind of technology would it use? Corridors such as Kipling and Islington may be best suited for LRT, however this runs in contrast with Metrolinx's own idea of a Jane Street LRT running into York Region to the Vaughan Metropolitan Centre station. It was shown back in 2008 that BRT would be too little for the corridor and even light metro may be far too much. However, Jane Street's central location in Toronto's West End, as well as Metrolinx's desire to have a transit line operating into York Region along Jane Street, runs headlong into the construction complexity the street poses south of Wilson Avenue. There is also the question of a western extension of the Ontario line, which could end this entire discussion, but this would depend entirely on the route it would follow through the city's West End. Either way, while the Jane Street LRT proposal as it is may be dead at the moment, Jane Street may still play a key role in the future development of Toronto's transit network. And with that, I will end this video here. Thank you for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it and want to see more like it, please hit that subscribe button because there are more videos like it on the channel, and there are more videos like it on the way. If there's anything you want to say about the Jane Street LRT, don't be afraid to do so in the comments section down below. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.